far from the shadow of the Vatican, there were religious movements, like the Brethren of Common Life, who were not afraid to criticize the church, to challenge authority they saw as corrupt. This was a strange, unsettling time, especially when seen through the eyes of a medieval man of faith, like the artist Hieronymus Bosch. As far as we know, he spent his whole life in and around the small Dutch town from which he took his name, Sir Togenbosch. Yet his most famous work, known to us as the Garden of Earthly Delights, includes some of the weirdest objects and creatures from worlds both known and unknown ever seen in art. Painted around 1500, its meaning seems at first sight disturbingly obscure and may never be fully explained. On the left, we see Christ with Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden. But it's an Eden unlike any other. That's a giraffe and an elephant, but also some rather frightening hybrid animals. On the right, some of art's most inventive impressions of the fate that awaits the damned. A pot-headed bird eats sinners and excretes them into the abyss. Instruments and forms of torture scatter the blackened landscape. But what does the central panel show us? The corruption of our earthly world? If so, what do the outsized fruit and birds represent? And why is it filled with the bizarrest of rituals? Might it be significant that Bosch painted this claustrophobic enigma just a decade after Columbus discovered the riches of America? One of my favourite details in Bosch's strange, teeming panorama of a picture shows a little group of people holding up a gigantic strawberry, almost like the cult devotees worshipping this object, this exotic thing. And I think when you look at Bosch's painting, it's very important to remember this was the first time anyone in Europe had ever seen a strawberry. It was an object of wonderment to him. It was as if the world that they'd known for so many centuries had suddenly been changed. They suddenly realised there was another whole universe out there, a new world. And I think Bosch's picture is in part an attempt to imagine what that new world might be like. This is a Pandora's box moment in the history of human civilization. Bosch lived at a great turning point in history, a moment when the medieval mind, obsessed with the terrors of hell and damnation, was giving way before a modern world of rapidly expanding horizons, of science and knowledge, a world where the old order was being challenged by dangerous new ideas. These were the things made flesh as the beasts of Bosch's imagination. In his own highly original way, Bosch expressed both the fascinations and the anxieties of his age. And if you want to see his own solution to those anxieties, I think you have to turn to one of his simpler, least cryptic pictures, a work that hangs in the Fine Arts Museum in Ghent. This fairly small, fairly dark image of Christ carrying the cross is one of Bosch's cruder pictures, but I think it takes you right to the centre of what he has to say. It takes you to the centre of his vision of the world. Here he sees the world as a kind of sea of malevolence, weirdness, evil through which Christ has to pass. Look at that crowd. 
these three blokes down here, including the evil thief. Oh, I suppose you might see them today on the street corner, drinking their tenants' full-strength lager at 10 in the morning. Here's a fat, jowled soldier. Curious image of a witch with a hat that reminds me of Pink Floyd album covers of their middle to late period, weirdly enough. Up here, the hook-nosed mercenary. Here we see another soldier clutching the cross with his fingers. Who knows why? And at the centre of it all, the image of Christ. I think you can just see a tear coming out of that, leaking out of his right eye. It's as if he is passing through this world as if it were a bad dream. He's right at the centre. And I think what Bosch is saying to us is in this age of anxiety, uncertainty, religious unrest, intellectual change, geographical exploration, this world where we suddenly no longer know where we are, that's the one thing we can be sure of. And that is the one thing we can be sure of. In that sense, Bosch is still a man of the Middle Ages. He does believe in God as the one route to salvation. And I think he gives us a little clue here, because there is actually, other than Christ, one other good figure in the painting, and that is Saint Veronica. She's got the veil, the veil that she used to wipe the brow of Christ. It's what lies behind the Turin shroud myth, on which is miraculously imprinted the image of Christ's face. She is on her way out of this maelstrom of evil. She's found her escape route because her escape route is the image of Christ that she's holding in her heart. And Bosch is saying to all of us looking at the picture, do what she does. Look at his face. Burn it into your mind's eye because it's the only it's the only path through this evil world. It's the only way out of these troubled times.